the way that the library is set up in Toolbox will pretty much work for just about everybody. But there may be a time that you're going to want to add a little bit more. So in this next video, we're going to go under the hood, as our developers like to say, and I'm going to show you how we can add some new project level prompts to our project wizard. This can be a really great way to save some time in setting up your project. Rather than having to go into the global variables and make some changes, let's go ahead and add those to our project wizard and make our lives a lot easier. So let's open up a new project and get this next lesson of training started. Now the changes that we're going to make here are only going to be at the project level, and I don't want them affecting any other projects that I'm working on. So that's why I went ahead and I opened up a new project. No need to get any cabinets drawn. So let's start off by going into Toolbox Setup, Project Specification Groups, and we're going to open up our Workbook Designer. So the first thing that we're going to do is add a new prompt that we can see in our project wizard. This is a list of all the current prompts we see inside of that wizard interface. And so we're just going to add a new prompt to the end of this list. So this is going to be the defined name that we're adding in column A. Column B is the value. And column C is going to be the data type. So this could be a checkbox, text box, anything like that. Now I'm just going to enter a one. This will be a text box. We have documentation on all the different control types. And you can also cheat and see the different control types that we have here. So one is a text box. You can see four. That's a checkbox. Five is the combo list. Six is hidden. So you get the idea. Now, if you're in the middle of working in Toolbox and you don't have that documentation handy, a little shortcut to figure out those control types, go into Part Properties and into the Prompts tab. Just have any prompt selected. Here you have the control types and this list here. So one, two, all the way down. Six is hidden. And then from there, it's going to start with the dimmed prompts. So 10 checkbox is going to be at 40. So four, but just add a zero after it. Dimmed combo box, right? Five or just the regular combo box. Make it dimmed would be 50. First radio button, 20. And next radio button, 30. Now there's a couple new ones in the foundation library that are not in that list, but at least that shows you the majority of all the different types. All right, so now let's finish up that new prompt. So now that we have our value and our control type set up, the next step is going to be to define the prompt name. So an easy way to do this in Workbook Designer is selecting the two cells in column A and column B, and now go to Insert, Find Name, and you can select From Selection. And this is going to automatically use the name from the left column, and that becomes your new defined name. When selecting in that value cell in column B, you want to make sure you see that defined name in this drop-down list. So that worked. We can close out of this save our changes, go into our project wizard, and under the default construction tab, there's our new prompt. Now, the reason it's coming into this first tab is because we didn't assign it to a different tab. So I can go back in there and show you how we can do that. Now, the next prompt we're going to add is going to be under this project setup tab. I want it under project setup, cabinet size defaults, and this is where we're going to put a new prompt that we usually access from the global variables. One that I find myself going too often is the finished end scribe. So instead of going to the global variables to control that, we're going to put it in our project wizard. I'm going to open up our global files and just find that finish and scribe prompt. Currently, the way that it's set up, we'll need to go into the global variables, enter a value, and now that adds the scribe to our products. But instead of doing that, I want this at the project wizard. But one thing that I need to do is also make sure that we don't accidentally go into these global variables and overwrite what we've done in the wizard. So now that we got our plan of attack, let's go back into workbook design. So all the prompt names here are grouped together by which tab they're on. And it's also nice too that they're in these different groups of colors. So at the bottom of this first group, that's on our first tab index, we're going to add that finished end scribe prompt. Because I want to keep it in order here. We have our default top drawer front height. And right below that is where I want our finished end scribe. Now because there's not any hidden columns off to the right here, we can select this entire row, right click, and insert a new prompt. We're just going to shift everything down, enter our new prompt name. So this is going to be FE scribe. Don't need an underscore. Just make sure you have the spelling correct. Set it to zero. And this is also going to be a text box. You'll notice that that value is red. And that doesn't necessarily mean that it's formula driven. You can see above we have this formula that's in here. If cabinet size defaults equals one, then give me a text box. Otherwise, hide this prompt. We're going to use that same formula here. So we'll just go back and drag that into that cell. So now we have the same formula. If cabinet size defaults equals one, then 
give me a text box so I can make a change. Otherwise, don't show me. Now let's make sure that we have it on the right tab. I'm gonna do the same thing, just copy the cell from above. Now this one's also formula driven. It's just using a function looking to the tab name called project setup. And the last thing we need to do before we close this workbook is define that FE scribe name. Same way we did before, picking from selection, now selecting in the cell just to confirm, there it is, so we're good to go. Now we can close out of this, save our changes, go back into the project wizard. And we still have that new prompt. I'm gonna work with that again in a second, but let's check out our project setup tab, cabinet size defaults, and there's our FE scribe. But now currently our parts are looking to the global variable for FE scribe. So now we gotta change that and have them look to the value that's coming from here. What we can do is go into our global variables, find FE scribe again, And now because this is the value that our products look to, we want to give this a formula saying equals the wizard workbook and the defined name FE scribe. But we're not done yet because what if somebody comes in here and now wants to stomp on that formula? I want to make sure that this is grayed out inside of here. So we can right click on that variable name, go to properties, and now we're going to call this a dimmed text box. So we can change the color to red, gives us an indicator letting us know that it's being controlled somewhere else. And hit OK. So far, so good. Now if you scroll up, you'll notice here that we have tokick assembly. So this is another variable that we have in our project wizard. It also has a dimmed combo box, so we can't change that here. But toolbox does have this one setting called disable wizard variables. So when we check this box, we no longer use our project wizard and we're making all the changes inside of our global. I typically don't ever do that, but you know, hey, I'm not the project wizard police. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now to make this work the right way, we wanna go back into that global variable. It's nice that it's dimmed out, but if I check that box to disable my project wizard, this is still gonna stay dim. So we'll go back into the properties and now we're gonna show the formula. You can see there, we just have it part valued with the 10 meaning dim text box. Go and cheat, go into our token assembly. We'll show that formula. I'm just gonna copy this. Paste it into our FE scribe control type formula, but instead of it reading five and 50, it's gonna read one for text box. And then if false, 10 for a dimmed text box. Make sure we hit OK, hit OK again. And now let's do a test. Back into general settings, disable wizard variables. There's our FE scribe. You'll notice nothing changed until we hit this refresh button. And now you can see we have the option to make the change here. Go back and make sure that's unchecked. And remember, we added that one new prompt at the beginning to our project wizard. Well, if you wanted to add that to your global variables, just select on the category you want to put it in. You can go to edit to add new variable. You can also right click to add new variable. Give it the name. And under the value, we're going to also reference our wizard workbook. And there's the defined named new prompt. See there, we have the value doing the same thing that we did to the other global variable. We don't want the changes to be made inside of this interface, so we'll give this the same formula. And now let's go do some testing. So first off, let's change our new prompt, change it to 20, just so we have something in there. Project setup, finished and scribe. Let's give ourselves one inch of scribe. Let's draw a new cabinet. Make sure we have our finished end turned on. Check out construction options. And there we have finished end scribe left, which looks to global FE scribe. Okay, so it all looks good in our cabinet. Let's go see what these changes look like inside of our global variable. There's our new prompt with the new value and the finished end scribe set to one. So that's how you add a new prompt to the project wizard and have it linked to the global variables. All right, that's it. Thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you in our next lesson.